Well, the priority dispute between Newton and Leibniz over the calculus was exactly what it sounds like, really, a dispute over who was first. Um, this was a dispute that began to blow up gradually during the 1690s after Leibniz had published his calculus. Um, it didn't come to begin with from Newton directly, but from one of Newton's followers, in this case Fatio de Duillier, who began to say that Newton had discovered some of this material first, uh, that Leibniz had possibly got hold of it from Newton or borrowed Newton's ideas, whatever. And this dispute gradually um, blew up, not so much between Newton and Leibniz themselves, who tended to stand back from it, but between their followers. They fought it out through their followers. On Newton's side, um, John Keel later came into it and stirred up trouble. On Leibniz's side, Johann Bernoulli fought for him. Um, and they fought very bitterly. Um, Leibniz himself stood back for quite a while, but in the end he appealed to the Royal Society, of which he was a member, to adjudicate on this, because it had become, by 1709, 1710 or so, it had become very nasty indeed. And so he, he asked the Royal Society to adjudicate. Newton was president of the Royal Society. A committee was formed, of which Newton was the chairperson. Uh, the committee met, I think, once. It didn't really need to meet because Newton had already done the work for it. He had collected all the papers to show uh, that he, to show what he had done in the early years during the 1660s. He'd collected the evidence for his own priority. He wrote the report that exonerated him and that claimed that he had the priority. And this report was published, it was called the Commercium Epistolicum Exchange of Letters, uh, at the end of 1712. Leibniz appealed against it later, but really um, appealing against Newton as president of the Royal Society was, was pretty futile. The result did drag on until Leibniz died. It, it went on and on, uh, even after this. It, it didn't end until Leibniz ended. When we look back now on the dispute between Leibniz and Newton, it, it's not very edifying. I mean, tempers were lost on both sides. Um, it became very um, vitriolic, very bitter as a dispute. As with all disputes, at times people tended to lose sight of the original argument and to bring into it all sorts of other arguments. So, for instance, uh, they dragged into the argument different philosophical ideas about the nature of the universe on Leibniz and Newton's side. Uh, so all these things came into it as well. But the basic dispute was about priority of the calculus. But even this was quite difficult to understand or disentangle because Newton's approach to calculus was so different from Leibniz's approach to calculus that at the time anybody looking at them wouldn't necessarily have recognised the same body of work there. And so what they were actually arguing about was not always clear. And the thing that knew, the part of it that Newton was most possessive about, in fact, was his method of quadrature, which depended on his method of infinite series. And this he guarded very jealously. And in this he was absolutely right. He was way ahead of Leibniz. Leibniz never really caught up with him on that. And so he was completely right that he was ahead of Leibniz. Um, Leibniz, on the other hand, had something that was much closer to what we now know as calculus.